Welcome to Get Out, which starts with a dude getting abducted in the hood. That dude is a black dude, and that hood is a white suburban neighborhood. By the way, chloroform doesn't work that fast, at least according to Google. And I believe Google with every fiber of my being. Then we cut to this bitch who's dating Wakanda betrayal guy who's worried because they're gonna go meet her parents, and she hasn't told them that he's black. And she's like, don't worry, they're totally not very super extremely fucking racist. In fact, they wish they were black people. And on their way over there, Chris calls his best bud Rodnick, who doesn't want him to go to a white woman's house, and he's taking care of his dog while he's away. And it's almost like someone put me in this movie in the form of Rod. Just watch. They had a deer, then call the cops for that, and the cop wants to see Chris's ID for absolutely no fucking reason, being racist towards him, and Chris is used to the whole song and dance, so he is going to comply, but no, white woman carrying out trumps everything, and he doesn't have to show ID for absolutely no fucking reason. After that, they arrive, he meets the parents, and finds out that they have a couple of black servants, and the dad's being all weird, like, Obama, am I right? He's amazing. Look, I know how it looks like black servants and shit, but we're cool, trust me. Then they have some drank, and their maid overpours some drank for Chris, and the mom treats her weird, then dickhead brother shows up, looks kinda like a dude from Home Alone but growing up. Then at dinner, the family's actually kinda normal for a bit until douche bro asks him how good he can fight. Asks him about MMA and shit. Like, see, the thing about jujitsu is not actually about a Jew in a jet suit. Now I knew that, thank you. Maid continues to be weird and creepy, and then Kevin tries to spar with him, but the mother puts a stop to that. And a night before bed, while well, this girl's brushing her teeth, he's like, I told you so, so she makes it up for him with pussy. Fair trade deal. By the way, the amount of Microsoft product placement in this movie is amazing, but at least they're not using fake movie web browsers when the inevitable research scene comes up. Even if it is Bing, nobody uses Bing. Those people don't exist, just like women on the internet, they don't exist. Also, even more off topic, I just recently found out that XQC watched some lame-ass text-to-speech movie recap channels, which which means there is a real possibility that he could stumble upon my shit. So in that case, sup you fat schnoz bitch. I enjoyed my stay, that's all I have to say. Back to the movie. Dude can't sleep at night, so he goes out to smoke a f which is a habit he's trying to stop, but no problem, he doesn't even get to do it because he gets freaked out by the groundskeeper or gardener or whatever, sprinting towards him at maximum speed and swerving last second and the maid creepily admiring herself in the reflection of a window. Why does this hoe look cross-eyed in this shot? Unimportant. On his way back to his room, the mom invites him to her office to do hypnosis on him and fix his ciggy addiction because she's a psychiatrist hypnosis person. So reluctant not to be rude, he goes in, dude, why? Fuck it, be rude. Fuck people get inside your brain, man. Fucking stupid ass bitch. Whatever, she starts asking him how his mom died, twirling a spoon and some tea, accessing the mainframe of his brain, touching the presso espresso memories about the circumstances of his mom's death, like, what were you doing when she died? Watching TV? Why didn't you call someone when she didn't come home? She died in a car accident. Because I was watching SpongeBob, the pizza delivery episode. I ain't finna mess that shit. You're right, that episode was fucking lit. So he cries, gets hypnosis, paralyzed, as a twinkle in his eyes. He ain't moving anymore. She doesn't sink into the flow. He has lost all the control floating into outer space and she tells him to his face that he's in the sunken place and she shuts his eyelids while he's locked up in his head next morning wakes up in his bed checks his phone leaves his friend on red i have no idea what that just was but i will not be repeating that last bit normally fuck you if you don't understand it i'm moving on with him in the nearby woods taking pictures of some shit because he's some sort of kind of known photographer or something like that made still being creepy he then talks to walter put your dick away walter no i am the one who fucks what the fuck is wrong with me i can't stay on point for one goddamn minute fuck he talks to the groundskeeper dude like what's up homie and groundskeeper dude not acting black he acting white as fuck like how do you do fellow black person and he apologizes for startling him last night with his late night exercise who the fuck cranks a hard 90 like that at top speed as an exercise what the f whatever he tells him that he spent an awful lot of time at mrs taj mahal's office last night so chris who thought it was a dream goes to tell his bitch about it and how walter's acting super fucking weird and white and how her mom hypnotized his brain when he didn't really want it sort of like brain but on the plus side he no longer feels the need to smoke and fucking whatever her name is is apologetic as usual then some more people arrive for a party their grandpa always used to hold and they just kept it going even though he quote unquote died and at this year festivity full of old white people they take weird to a new extreme asking chris a shit ton of questions handling him in a way almost like they are shopping for a person with the qualities that they want like how good are you at golf do you have a massive cock i want to say the n word what I actually said was something along the lines of black being hip and in right now but realistically that's what he actually wants to do it's just fact okay let's just be honest so chris excuses himself because what the hell and stumbles upon the only other non-servant black dude who is also acting white as shit and he's like what the fuck is this man and then he meets a blind art dealer on his walk in the woods who is not as weird as the rest of them then goes upstairs to get his phone he less charging that has been unplugged and he thinks the maid did it and now the phone is dead no way that phone is dead dog it was well over halfway charged in the morning i know batteries suck and all and it ain't no nokia brick that holds a charge longer than an average russian presidential term but it also ain't no one-year-old iphone so fuck you that phone is not dead whatever he charges and calls rod and tells him black people here are not acting black and the white folk here are acting fucky and he got hypnotized and shit and rod thinks that they want him as a sex slave or some shit tells him 
to get the fuck out of there. Listen to Raji, them c they want your anus. Then the maid comes in, apologizing for accidentally unplugging his phone while cleaning, and fucking cry laughs, says that they treat her like family here, then walks away, fucking eerie shit. And he goes back down, only to get immediately bobbed by a bunch of white dudes with an Asian guy asking about the pros and cons of being black. Fuck it, I'll jack in a box this bitch early. They transpose rich white dudes' brains into young black people's heads so they can live out the rest of their life and control their bodies. Sort of like the change up with Ryan Reynolds or criminal with Ryan Reynolds, but more like selfless with Ryan Reynolds. Now think about how weird it's going to be if an Asian dude did that and we ended up with a black guy speaking in an Asian accent. Life will be such a fucking pain in the ass just trying to come up with a lie to explain why that is. Just fucking die, you old piece of shit fart. So anyway, he swears him over to the straw, sun hat, whatever, I don't know, hats, black guy, then tries to snap a pic of him while he's speaking, but retard left the flash on, which not only creates a really awkward moment, but also resets the dude back to his black self, because there's still a piece of the old black dude in there, giving him a 11 Stranger Things nosebleed thing and makes him come at him, yelling at him to get out, get out! The white dudes hold him back and the mom hypno brain fucks him back to white dude in black man's body, saying that the flash just triggered a seizure and he's all fine now, and Chris does not believe that. Why are they not asking him to delete that picture? No, before that actually, why are they not asking what he took in the first place? Is it because he's a photographer and they think that's normal? Doesn't matter. Him and Sabrina go to hang by the lake. He doesn't believe the seizure horse manure and wants to leave. We get a bit of a sob story about his mom and he like, I won't leave without you. You're all I've got. Okay, let's leave. <laughs> Meanwhile, the white dudes are getting out of business. They are bidding on who gets to buy Chris and the blind art dealer wins that bidding war. The guests leave, the interracial couple get back to the house. Chris starts packing and sends his picture of the weird black guy acting the white to Rod. Rod calls him like, we know that guy. He's from so-and-so or whatever. And Chris is like, I knew I knew him from somewhere. He's over here acting all weird with an old white lady and shit. And Rod's like, sex life. Then his phone dies and he wants to leave even more urgently. But first he inspects this little storage area with a box in it full of pictures of Sabrina, the teenage bitch with a bunch of black dudes, with the last two being the current servants. That bitch is the recruiter, but she got the car keys, so he has to sort of play along till he gets to the car, but he doesn't get there because the whole family surrounds him at the front door. Sabrina reveals herself to be an evil hoe, and the dad says some shit like, we are gods trapped in raccoons. Or cocoons. Was it cocoons? Yeah, it was cocoons. The mom clinks the teacup and he gets paralyzed. It's like that snap your fingers, go to sleep, hypnosis thing, you know? And mom tells Kevin McAllister that he's damaged him enough already. No, he did not. The fuck did he do? Also, I thought Kevin was gonna turn out to be a good guy, like in that one movie called Ready or Not. Was there a good guy in Ready or Not? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Dude gets carried away while he's in the sunken place, and Rod does Bing research on Andre, the sex slave dude from the star of the movie that got abducted in the white neighborhood. Turns out he's missing, and he tries to call Chris again, but no answer because the phone is dead. Then he goes to the cops for help, but they are useless, and they just laugh at him because they think he's insane. So he keeps trying Chris's phone until he gets an answer because it's been charged by Sabrina the bitch who is now psychopathic robotic and just fucks with Rod and gives him no leads at all. But he continues trying nevertheless while Chris is strapped to a chair in a room with an old TV that starts playing a video of dead white grandpa telling him about the coagula procedure. Then the teacup shows up, twirls around a bit and he gets knocked out again. And after a while once again wakes up having scratched at the leather of the seat revealing the inside of it, the fuzzy white stuff. Cause nervous cat scratching is something he does subconsciously. Then Another video starts playing, except it's not a video, it's like a Zoom call between him and the blind art dealer who wants his eyes, man. He explains to him the process of the coagula, where they rip his brain out and shove it into Chris's body so he can control it, but they have to leave a part of Chris's brain in there, the part that connects his nervous system because it's really important shit, and this will have the effect of Chris still being in there, but not being able to control anything and being a passenger in his own body, forever being in the sunken place. Then the Zoom meeting ends, and a little while later they knock him out again. While neurosurgeon dad is prepping up the blind guy's head, McAllister goes to fetch Chris's body, undoes the restraints, and this shot is not like this shot by the way, the restraints are different. And while he's fiddling around with Ivy Beck, Chris gets up and knocks him out with a rich person game ball, cause he put teddy bear guts in his ears before they knocked him out for the second time. Except why did you give him time to do that and not just knock him out right after Zoom call finished? Also, I find it very hard to believe that little bit of fucking white belly fuzz blocked out all the sound waves from his eardrums from that, you know, trigger to make him go paralyzed or fall asleep. And a second also, why'd you stop after two strikes to the fucking head? You only stop once you see the inside of his brain my guy. He's definitely gonna come back. He ain't dead. Anyway, he looks at the deer on the wall, which I'm guessing means that he's gonna stab someone with his antlers, and yes, he kills the dad with that shit. Good on you, Chris. He then destroys mom's teacup so she can't knock him out again and kills her. Then he tries to leave, but guess what? McAllister is not dead, and he comes to stop him, so he disposes of him probably this time, and tries to leave in the kid's Porsche, but runs over the maid. And because he feels guilty about his mom and that woman doing the coagula shit, he takes her with him in the car to save her, knowing full well she's possessed by a fucking cracker. Bad move, my guy. Because she attacks him in the car, making them 
crash into a tree, she dies. And once that was all happening, Sabrina, who looks completely different now because of one haircut, it's amazing what one haircut can do, is psychopathically eating cornflakes and just browsing through new potential meat to coagulate. She hears him run over the maid, aka her grandmother. It's unbelievable that she only hears that and not everything else from the beating of the mom, throwing of the cup, killing of everybody, and especially, or maybe most loudest, the yelling and slamming and killing of McAllister. But whatever, guess the car's louder. She shows up, starts shooting at him with the white grandpa in black guy, Walter, in tow, sprinting towards Chris, tackles him to the ground. So Chris, while on the ground, he got his phone before he left, reaches for his phone and takes a picture of him, flashes him, resetting the guy, which makes Walter ask for the gun so he can quote unquote do it himself. And there's no way he doesn't mean killing himself with that, 100%. Fuck, he only shoots her. No, never mind. He's killing himself. Woo, suicide. But I got an important question though. Sabrina saw the flash and she knows it gives them a factory reset. Then why the fuck did this dumb asshole comply and give him the gun? Doesn't matter. Chris goes to choke the bitch out but stops halfway, which is retarded. But doesn't matter because the cops are here and we all know what that means. Bunch of white dead dudes and one black guy. Fucking instant racism, right? No, bitch. Because it's not the cops. It's fucking the airport security. TS motherfucking A. It's Rod, baby. He found him because they handle shit. He told you so's him, then they drive off and the bitch please out. Good riddance. This movie gets 12 butterflies out of 7 Ming Dynasty bases.